So my mom gave me a genius idea. Okay, so for this, I actually did a lot of research. Well, research. I looked online. Okay, this kind of felt like a game of Jenga. I don't think that's really the correct analogy. The hard thing about this dress is like, I don't know how it fully looks until I'm done. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm recreating this tunnel tube dress by Mira Palais. I saw this dress, um, actually, Emily Mariko, she is a content creator. She wore it on her wedding day as like her getting ready dress. And I really liked it because I like how I feel like it's really customizable, but it looked really complex to make and it kind of was. So that is what I'm making in this week's video. I hope that y'all like it. If you do, don't forget to like and subscribe, follow me on my social medias, and let's get into it. Okay, in this week's video, I am going to try to make this dress by Mira Palais. So I feel like Mira Palais is like a small luxury designer and I've seen them a little bit on TikTok and I've seen that dress a little bit recently, like Emily Mariko, she is a food TikToker. She wore a white version for her like in between getting ready dresses for her wedding. And I saw a video where pretty much like the dress is kind of adjustable and I really liked that. So I decided I was gonna try to make it. Okay, so for this, I actually did a lot of research. Well, research, I looked online. <laughs> um, and the designer, he actually has like a um, saved on his Instagram page, a place where he talks about the dress and like some of the construction of it. So I'll put up parts that like correspond with what I'm gonna say. So I feel like there's three ways that you can make this dress. So I'm gonna explain quickly those and I'm gonna go with the way that I'm gonna try to do it. Okay, so I think one of the first ways would be to make, so I think all of these would work or all of these you need like an A-line dress that's a little bit bigger than the size, like than your size. And so for the first option to have like the ties go through the dress, you could make like a tunnel, kind of like, you know, when you like fold a piece of fabric together, flip it inside out and have that go all the way around the dress. So you could like tie laces through there. I, that's definitely not how he did it. And I didn't really want to do it that way. Cause I, I don't know, it just felt like it didn't, I feel like it wouldn't look how I wanted it to. So, the second option would be to like make a dress pattern um and this is the one that i'm probably gonna do <laughs> cut the like cut out into like pretty much cut the dress into sections and fold over a little bit so that creates a tunnel for the laces and then the last way is i feel like probably something similar to that and this is what i think that he did and i'll put up the clip in a second but he has a lining in the dress so he probably just did the lining made the tunnels so the laces go through like between those pieces so yeah side of the dress looks like it has all of these tunnels and the silky finish just ends up feeling like a dream on the body I don't know if any of that truly makes sense, <laughs> but, and then for the edging for the dress, so I did not believe, he said that he used an overlock stitch to make it look like piping, and, um, and I'll put in a clip of him saying that as well. To create a dress that was completely covered in these ruffles, and so each one is actually finished with an overlock, and so that's what creates this kind of piping effect. But I was like, that does not look like as, cause you know how like with like an overlock stitch, you can see a little bit of the fabric through it. And I was like, I just don't think it is. So I feel like you could do ribbon, but when I looked closer, it actually is an overlock stitch. So I'll probably do that. And then for the ties, I don't really know. I feel like I'll probably just make my own because I feel like you need a lot. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find like actual laces that will like do what I need them to do. So pretty much just to summarize, what I plan to do for this dress is make an A-line dress pattern that is a few sizes bigger than what I want it to be. I will say for the bust, I'm probably gonna only make that like one size bigger and the bottom maybe like two sizes bigger. Um, Cause I don't want the bust to be like too, too big. And then I'm gonna cut that pattern into sections, add some seam allowance to the top to be able to fold it over. And then I will probably do an overlock stitch on the top to give that piping and then connect the bottom flap um, to like the piece above it so that can create the tunnel. 
and then to get the ties through i'll probably just have to cut it and like use a stitch to secure it so i don't know if that makes sense but i'm gonna get ready and make the dress pattern and go from there okay i'm about to draft the pattern for the dress so i think i'm gonna make the dress about 28 inches long because in the actual mirror play dress it has seven sections and so 28 is divisible by um, seven which will mean each section will be four inches so I'm gonna draw the dress to my measurements and then I'm probably gonna add about like five or six inches depending on like what I'm feeling and then after that I'll cut it out and then I will mark where I want all of the sections to be and then I will cut that out and then with extra paper I will add the like the fold down allowance <laughs> we can call it so the part that will be fold down fold down and surge and I'm thinking about three inches for that just to be on the safe side so yeah Okay, here's the pattern, and as you can see, please kind of step on it. I have it cut out, so the sides won't need seam allowance, but I am going to do probably about three inches of seam allowance on the top of each piece, except for the top, and then I think about one and a half or two on the bottom. Because um, um, on the bottom, I'm gonna surge it before I like connect the layer below it if that makes sense and so I just want to make sure I have enough seam allowance for that without making it too short so I'm going to show you the fabric that I'm going to use and I'm going to get ready and start cutting it out. So for the seam allowance so I didn't put it into the pattern I'm going to use the magnet trick where you connect magnets to your scissor to gauge how much um, seam allowance you want to have so I'm going to do that and I'm also probably going to cut it on a fold just so I don't have to like cut each piece out twice. Like just to like reduce some of the work. Also, I just have to show you Blaze loafing on the pattern. Okay, this kind of felt like a game of Jenga. I don't think that's really the correct analogy, but like lining this up to make sure that I have enough. And I realized, so I washed this fabric because this is fabric that I got from a family friend that they've had for a while. And I realized I surged the bottom to wash it and I was like, wait, I don't need so much seam allowance for seven because it's already surged. So I was able to move everything, <laughs> everything down and make it fit. So I think I might do a little bit of less seam allowance than what, what I just said. Cause I think I said like two and three inches, but when I was looking at that, I was like, I feel like these pieces are just gonna be really big. <laughs> so. I think this is how I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna get ready and cut it all out now.
Okay, I have all the pieces connected, so now I'm just gonna serge the top and the bottoms of each to uh, make sure it doesn't fray, and then afterwards I will fold down the top and do the little like binding or piping type stitch. Okay, so I sewed all the pieces together and searched the top and the bottom. So a little story time. Um, the serger I use, I got it on Facebook Marketplace and for a very long time, the thread would snag and one day the right needle broke and I just never replaced it. Because I actually bought replacement angels, but I felt like I had better success with using three strands instead of four. And then one day the fabric was like, the thread would like snag a ton and I finally replaced the left needle and I don't have that problem anymore. So I think it might have just been the needles were dull. All of that to say is um, using a three strand overlock with this fabric, like the white on yellow, I don't think is going to look how I want it to be. So I'm going to try doing four on some test, grab test fabric to see if it gives the look that I want and if not I'll just buy ribbon. So I'm going to get ready and replace that needle and test it. I remember why I stopped using four threads on this serger. The upper looper comes undone. Like it almost seems as though it comes unthreaded. I do not know. And I used to have this problem when I had three and when I changed the needle that went away. So I'm gonna play around with it some more and see. But if not, I think I'm just gonna see if I can adjust the thread length and see if that'll give me the effect I want with just using three strands instead of four so yeah so I was able to get the five strand working but then it kind of just stopped and like I said I've always not five four strands um, I've always had problems using two needles before so I was like I'm just not going to deal with it because I'm gonna be really frustrated if that's happening while I'm doing it so I adjusted the stitch length to one millimeter from the normal 2.5 and I think it kind of gives the effect that I am going for um, I wish it was like I don't know I feel like I should use ribbon <laughs> I just don't want to um, because the white on the yellow is kind of hard to see like I do want it to be more subtle so I don't know anyways I'm gonna start sewing that on the actual pieces um, on the top of each piece and then afterwards I will connect them all together okay so for serging the top I already said that I'm using um, the stitch length of one millimeter and I iron down the top first because I can't really use pens just so I know like just so it'll be even and then I serge it Okay, so I saved the serger ends. I haven't cut them off. Um, or I didn't cut them off after I did it. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna pull this out and then I'm gonna cut it shorter. I take one strand and pull it and it brings these and these stitches in tighter. And then I take this little, I don't know, I think this is like a loop turner or something. I take this and I hook around the leftover and I loop it through a little bit. And I'm doing all that because since these are exposed, I want them to be as secure as possible. And so I feel like tightening the stitches as well as like hiding the leftover in the rest of it, it's like achieving that. Okay, I have all the pieces laid out except for the top piece. So now I'm gonna start connecting them. But what I'm thinking is I'm probably gonna connect them and sew on the wrong side just so I can like make sure I'm sewing where I want to. Okay, so for the top piece, I kind of made a little bit of a mistake. So this is where it's attached, which is really small. So I wouldn't really be able to like fold it down to create a tunnel without it one being really awkward here and then maybe like interfering with the piece that comes um, under it. So what I'm thinking of doing is 
pretty much finishing it where I do like a rectangle on the right or yeah on the right side flip it over and then use that to create the tunnel um, so then that way it won't get like too close so I'm gonna serge all of these and I'm gonna connect this to the piece like the rest of the dress and then I'm gonna just cut out like a long rectangular strip that I can ta attach around on the right side flip it over and then probably top stitch it and do a bottom stitch so that it can create a tunnel for the ties. Okay, so I'm gonna make an adjustable strap or adjustable straps for this using these and this. I didn't know I needed this the first time, so I have to go back out and get something. And I'm gonna put up the video that I'm following and I will link that below. But pretty much, to my understanding, is um, I need one piece that's about like three inches that will hold this and this will attach to the back and then make my larger strap um, connect this and then loop the bottom of this like long piece through this and then the end of that that's looped through will be what's attached. So I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm gonna try making one first and then I'm gonna move on to the next. So I'm thinking of doing three inches for the one that holds the D-ring and then the longer piece being like 16 inches because I roughly measured, I want it to be about 17, but I'm not sure if that measurement is accurate. So. Cause I'm thinking that like if you have it the longest it can be that would be about maybe like give or take an inch or two the like length that you cut it so I think it should be fine but yeah I'm gonna get ready and do that. Okay, so right now, this is like a smog. <laughs> the hard thing about this dress is like, I don't know how it fully looks until I'm done. So I just attached the straps. I think I'm going to take off the bottom panel because it's a little longer than I want. But a few things, I did not do a top stitch here because I kind of liked how this looked. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna cut two holes in like where each of the tunnels are and stitch around it to close it up so that way I can sneak the ties through after I do those. Okay, so for where the ties are gonna come out, I'm just gonna cut one hole instead of doing two. So I marked um, up and down the whole thing except for the bottom because I think I'm gonna take this off. I marked where I wanna cut it, so I'm gonna get ready and cut it with um, my thread scissors. And then I have this that I got, which is supposed to help stop fabric from fraying. So I'm gonna put that over and then later I'm going to go around like stitch around them just for reinforcement um so yeah Okay, to close the opening for the tie, I'm going to use, I'll put up the video of the stitch that I'm using. So this person online, they made their own eyelids. So pretty much you just like make a loop and you sew through that. And I'm gonna try to film it and show it a little bit, but that is what I'm doing. And then afterwards, I'm gonna make the ties. Okay, so for the ties, I'm using this fabric and I'm cutting it out about like four inches. And then I sew a tunnel and I flip it inside out. And to cut it, I'm using these magnets as a guide instead of actually like tracing it. And then after I have it done, I'm using a bob pin <laughs> to thread it all the way through. And then, yeah. And the last thing I'm gonna do, once I have 
the top six panels. I'm gonna see if I wanna take off the seventh panel or not, and then I'll win it. So my mom gave me a genius idea. I folded the fabric a few times and then I'm just cutting it so I don't have to cut all the way across. Thanks for watching. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on my social medias. I really like how this dress came out. I've only tried wearing it one way so far, which is where I have like the waist cinched, but I feel like I could wear it with just the top cinched or like the waist in the entire dress. So I don't know. I just like how customizable this dress was. So I really hope that y'all like it too. And until next time, bye guys.